Good morning, American Heritage School students. Welcome back. We have missed you. We hope you enjoyed the flag raising ceremony and cannon shot this morning out in the stadium. My name is Mr. Beckwith. I'm the principal. Let's begin as we always do in our assemblies with a song and a prayer. Actually, we had a prayer already out in the stadium, so let's just sing. We will sing our school anthem, our school song, Children of Liberty. If you'll please put a face covering on now while you sing and then stand as we normally do. We'll put the words for you right here on the screen and we'll sing together to kick our year off. Okay, here we go. Thank you. You sounded great. Okay, I actually couldn't hear you all because this is a pre-recorded video, but I can imagine you sounded great. Let's introduce your 2021 student government and then let you hear from President Ellie Sessions and Vice President Lizzie Beckwith. So Ellie Sessions and Lizzie Beckwith, President and Vice President. Secretary of Publicity is Charity Ellers. Secretary of Service, Izzy Fee. Secretary of Dances, Abby Cobb. Secretary of Finance, A.J. Willardson, he's the money man. Ninth grade representative, Luke Sperry. Tenth grade representative, Kyle Zufelt. Eleventh grade representative, Emma Schmidt. And twelfth grade representative, Aliyah Maxfield, with our international students representative, Adam Yang. Okay, now let's hear from Ellie and Lizzie as they uh, talk to us about some things that are in their heart and their mind and their vision for you this year. Hey Patriots, I'm Ellie Sessions. And I'm Lizzie Beckwith. And we're Student Body President and Vice. We're so excited to serve you guys this year and we know it's gonna be kind of different but it's still gonna be one of the best years yet. We're still gonna have fun activities and dances in the most safe and fun way possible. We're still gonna have a lot of the things that you love, like sports games and like she said, dances and all of that good stuff. Some of the activities that we're planning is we're gonna have a spirit week and that's gonna be filled with all kinds of fun games and uh, events and uh, service projects. We're gonna do that later on in the year, hopefully during third term so that we can be as safe as possible and have a lot of fun together. Another thing that we're going to do this year is we're going to do a time capsule. As you guys know, it's the 50th anniversary of our awesome school. And it's been a very memorable year <laughs> in many ways. So we want to make a big memory out of it and have a time capsule to remember this year by. And if you're a new student, welcome. We're excited to meet you and we're excited that you're here. 
Our theme for this year is Connect and Hope. And this year we really want to be sure that we connect with you and that you're aware of all of the things that are happening at school. Whether it be a dance or a tryout, we want you to be sure that you know long in advance that these things are happening and that you never miss a thing. We're still going to make announcements to you during Stewardship Minute to make sure that you guys hear what's going on and that you don't miss anything. And if you ever have any ideas um, that you want incorporated in our school, come and talk to us. We, are, we would love to hear your ideas and anyone else in student government that you want to talk to. Um, we're completely open to your ideas. Okay, the second part of our theme is hope. And we have a scripture to share with you about this. In 2 Nephi chapter 31, verse 20, it says, Wherefore, you must press forward with a steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope and a love of God and of all men. We know it may not be the perfect year in every sense of the word, and things in the world right now really aren't perfect. But we can still have a perfect brightness of hope. Um, we can't control what happens in the world, but we can control what happens in our school. And we know that some of you might be scared that we're only going to be able to be in school two weeks and then we'll have to go to online and that you might not get the year that you wanted. But we can stay in school as long as we are safe. And the way that we can do that is by doing things that administration has asked us to do. We can wear our face masks. We can use the sanitation stations all around the school. We can wash our hands regularly and we can socially distance to ensure that we have a safe year and that we are able to limit the number of COVID cases in our school. And the better we are at doing these things, the longer we'll be able to be in school. And I know it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard for us too. And we're all in it together. And we're gonna try really hard to make it so that we can have the best year yet. <laughs> Thanks guys. <laughs> Thank you, Ellie and Lizzie. You are naturals. I absolutely love the way you have started our year off with a theme that is so visionary and addresses such deep yearning of our hearts. I think we've all felt that absence of each other. I think we've all felt the need to connect with each other and perfect brightness in hope. That is beautiful. Okay, well, we'll talk just a little more about the safety procedures that Ellie and Lizzie mentioned as, as they were presenting. Uh, but first, we're so excited to see all of you who have returned to American Heritage, our returning patriots. We are also very excited to meet all of you who are new. So, if you are new, we would like you to just stand right now in your classrooms. Go ahead, stand up. We want everyone to look around here. If there's someone new in your room, or even if there's not, if there's not anyone new in your room, I want you to think about what it was like to be new, ever, at any time in your life. What was it like to be new? What did you feel? What did you hope? How did you want people to treat you as you were new, to welcome you, to show you? Remember those feelings and do the same thing for these, our new, um, students who have joined us. We love you. We're glad to have you. We always make quick friends with new families and students here. Uh, we also want to mention that we have some students who are gathering with us via remote broadcast. And in fact, I'd like to let you know who they are. Uh, first of all, we have some international students who were not able to get back into the country. And so you know these names. These are your friends and mine. Christy Jing, Isling Jo, Kevin Cho, and Lincoln Shi, they are all joining us remotely, probably watching this right now. And then we also have a few students uh, who are local, but also joining us via Zoom and broadcast. And those students are Lucy Higgins, Hava Lambert, Alyssa Lamp, Nancy Meller, Annika and Mika Southern, Holly and Jacob Valentine, Thomas and Thomas Welker. So uh, to those students, we're so glad you're joining us even via video. All right, so what's going on with all the construction? Well, some of you have seen some of these pictures before, but now it's actually happening. It's not just pictures. You can see the big diggers out there. It's coming. It'll be done by this spring. What is going to be done? Well, uh, take a look at this picture here. We've got this building number 11 and 12, which are being built on the east and north sides of our high school building. Number 11 is our new recreation hall and gym. That'll be an additional space for you to do athletics, for you to do concerts, plays, to eat, to just um, have a commons area, beautiful windows there. On the north 
is a new classroom building. Uh, that will include not only additional classes, but also a lunchroom, uh, a commons area eating facility, lunch facilities. Uh, upstairs, there will be a large space there where we can do a lot of different things, including science, technology, engineering, and math classes, and some ad additional administration uh, spaces there in that building number 12, that classroom building. Uh, here you can see an exterior picture. Uh, you might notice on the south-facing side, there is an inscription. And uh, so this is looking at it from the north, from the northwest. Uh, here's from the north again. But here's this inscription on the south-facing side of the new gym. That is our anchor scripture in our honor code. That's where the lawyer came to Jesus and said, Master, what is the greatest commandment in the law? This is Matthew chapter 22. And Jesus responds, and you know this scripture. <laughs> Many of you have memorized it. That Jesus said to this lawyer, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. All right, that's going to be inscribed right there on the outside of the new phase of, of our high school building coming. And on September 17th, Constitution Day, you will see our new mascot statue, Nathan Hale, uh, dedicated. We'll unveil it. We'll dedicate it there. Some beautiful plaques. You'll be able to read about his history. A big festival on that day, including fireworks and a movie that you can all watch in the stadium together. It'll be a blast. That's September 17th. Join us. All right. How about safety? Let's talk about some safety things. You might feel a little bit like it's kind of dystopian society coming back to schools these days with masks and shields and, and safety sanitizing stations everywhere. Uh, well, let's just put all of it in context, shall we? First of all, in Utah, there have been 365 COVID-19 related deaths out of 3.1 million people since March, okay? Now that's too many deaths, of course. One is a lot, right? But to put that in context, that's 10 out of every 100,000 people. The average age of those deaths is 72. Um, so COVID-19 is currently about the same risk as driving in Utah. It's about the same fatality statistics. But the trend could change, especially during flu season. And we should work to reduce that risk as much as possible. So there's a couple things. There's three big things that we can do in order to reduce risk. The first one is physical distancing. And I think you're all starting to get used to what that means, six feet or more, right? The second one is regular hand washing and sanitizing. And we're making that easy for you everywhere. Sanitized stations, sanitizing stations, and disinfectants, and wipes in your classrooms. There's just lots of things you can use to stay clean. And the third one is face coverings. And that's the one we need to spend a little bit more time on here in this assembly. OK? So um, we have nearly 100 individuals in our school community, students, teachers, and family members who are at high risk of serious health complications if they get COVID-19. They are your friends and they are your family and mine. That's the first reason that we want to take safety seriously is because there are people who are at risk whom we love. Also, these safety procedures are required, many of them are required by the state health department and our local health department in all public and private schools. And we follow state and local department, health department directives, okay? Thirdly, and maybe even more important to you, I don't know, I hope not more important than the first thing I just said here, but this third bullet, reducing COVID-19 risk means 
increasing our chances of staying together on campus. And Ellie and Lizzie pled with you, they, they talked to you about that in their presentation just now, that the better we do at reducing risk, the more likely it is that we can stay together on campus. It doesn't mean if somebody gets sick it's their fault. It doesn't mean that if we have to close a class or quarantine the school for a week or two at some point in the fall that it's any specific person or group's fault. It just means that we can do some things together to reduce that risk, right? Okay, well some of you might ask or you've had conversations with your families or you've heard people say but face coverings and face masks, some people will say, is it really the law? Well, people argue about this a lot. The short answer is yes, it is the law unless you want to try to convince the state and local health department that it's not the law and I'll just say to you good luck. That's a hard case to make to our local public health officials or our state public health officials and the school could lose its business license if we ignore these public health directives. So for most intents and purposes it is the law even though it was made through an executive order, right? And in the meantime, while we're arguing about whether it's the law or not, and again remember, we're doing this mostly because it's safe, it's better to reduce risk for those people who, whom we love, right? In the meantime, <laughs> our school's board of trustees has asked us, and we are asking you, to follow the public health guidance of the state and local health departments. If that ever changes, if our board or if we ever decide that there's an unreasonable expectation and we choose not to follow it, we'll let you know. But in the meantime, we have always, we are now, and we will continue to follow state and local health directives. Okay? And one more why. Do face masks really help, you might ask, or people might ask? And the answer is yes, when worn properly. So let me just show you here. A face mask is intended to cover mouth and nose. So when you're placing it on, put that on. Try not to touch the outside if you can avoid it. Uh, we know that it's not as comfortable as, as going without one, but uh, try to keep that on as much as you can. We'll talk about when that's required. This is a face mask. This is a face shield, and we'll talk about this in a minute as well. Doctors have known for a long time that covering the face, the mouth, and the nose, when worn properly, a face mask helps. It doesn't eliminate risk of viruses or other diseases, but it does reduce the risk of transmission, okay? And we understand that. It's not going to make COVID go away completely, but it will eliminate the risk of transmission. All right, what is a face mask? <laughs> how is it defined? And how do we talk about it? So, face mask, I just put one on and I showed you. It is defined as a uh, covering that covers the nose and mouth without openings that can be seen through. So we don't, we don't want big holes in your mask, okay? It's made of synthetic or natural fi fabrics. It secures under the chin, so around the mouth and under the chin. It fits snugly against the sides of the face uh, and against the nose. You know, some people, when they try and they're just wearing a mask down here, this isn't really doing anything, right? I mean, sometimes we pull it down to eat uh, or if we need to communicate in a way that someone can see our mouth, but this isn't doing anything to reduce risk if we wear a face mask this way, and it's not what the public health directives expect. They really expect that to be over the mouth and nose and fit snugly around the chin, okay? And the state order actually says that appropriate face masks do not have exhalation valves on them. You can see some of those that have big um, holes in them or valves, that is less safe. It, it, it allows virus and other things to pass through it, okay? What about a face shield? How is that defined? So a face shield, and here's one right here. A face shield is a face covering that covers the entire face. It protects the eyes of the wearer. So uh, those little half face shields that are clear that just cover the mouth and the nose, those are not permitted in schools 
according to the, the health order, okay? It's made of clear plastic or semi, similar non-permeable transparent material. It secures around the head, the top of the head. It doesn't secure under the chin. And it doesn't fit as snugly around the face as a face mask does. So this is away from your face. Uh, you actually can breathe a little better with these because you're just drawing air from everywhere. And when you exhale, um, you know, your exhalation, your breath goes out the sides and down. And so um, it can be used with a mask or without a mask under certain circumstances. When can we wear masks? When do we need to wear masks? When do we need to wear face shields? What are our options? Okay, let's talk about that. So masks are required at all times in school buildings and classrooms unless we are actively eating or drinking. And when we're eating and drinking, we take our mask off or our face shield off. We need to be at least six feet apart, okay? This is the reason that we will be eating, at least when it's bad weather outside, we'll be eating in our classroom so that we can have enough people spread out eating in the building at the same time um, or have enough room for people to spread out. We couldn't spread out six feet apart if we did it just in the lunchroom or even just in the arena during lunch. It would take four hours a day for us to do lunchtime if we had to all spread out six feet in those facilities. So we will be eating in classrooms when it's bad weather. Otherwise, we can be outside and eat. We can spread out. You may also remove a mask or a face shield in a school building if you have a medical exemption. We'll talk about exemptions here in just a minute. And you may remove a face mask or face shield during PE or extracurricular activities like sports or dance if you can't perform the activity with the mask on. So, for example, in orchestra, which is an extracurricular activity, you will see many orchestra musicians, student musicians, wearing their face covering. Even though it's an extracurricular activity, it doesn't require removing the mask in order to play the string instrument. So the mask should stay on in that case. Wind instruments, that's a different story, right? They'll need to take it off in order to play the trumpet or the trombone or whatever it is. So if you're playing sports, and you're going to be vigorously running, you're out on the court, obviously, or the field, obviously, that mask can come off so that you can breathe freely. And you'll need to do that, take in a lot of air, right, while you're running. But while you're on the sidelines, it is appropriate, and we would expect, especially if you're sitting close to each other or in the dugout, we would expect you to have those face coverings on unless you're really actively running and need to have that face covering off when you're within six feet of each other, okay? All right, and our coaches will be doing verbal symptom checks. They'll just, before you start practice, before you start your game, before you start your rehearsal, those coaches and extracurricular uh, program directors, they will just ask, is anyone here feeling sick? Has anyone had a fever in the last two weeks? Does anyone have any of these symptoms? Is anyone coughing right now? And if so, we'll just have you wait until you've been checked out by your parent and, and make sure that it's not COVID-19, okay? How about face shields? Face shields are okay during foreign language instruction or when you are presenting at the front of a class. Times when it is essential for others to be able to see your mouth. Otherwise, you should not be wearing a face shield, you should be wearing a face mask. But if you're one of those students that has a medical exemption, again, we'll talk about that, then if you can wear a face shield, this is better than wearing nothing at all. So if you feel comfortable enough to breathe with a face shield on, this will reduce risk more than not having anything covering your mouth and nose and eyes, okay? And we would support that, we would, we would ask you to do that. Okay, what about outside? Because, you know, it feels like it's gonna be a lot wearing face shields or face masks inside. We're gonna take mask breaks, plenty of mask breaks. Uh, of course, you can remove them whenever you're eating or drinking inside. Um, and yes, even when you're outside, if you're in, in, especially in groups, when you're within six feet, you should be wearing one. But if you're physically distancing, you can take those off. Okay, outside. All right, what about exemptions? What are those? 
why do some students not wear a face mask or a face shield in the building? And you will see some of those. 90% um, or more of our students and teachers will be wearing face masks and face shields. That's almost all of us. But there will be a few, it's about 10%, whose parents have requested a medical exemption, meaning the student has a significant underlying health reason not to wear a mask, and that includes asthma, skin conditions, or other serious medical and emotional conditions. There are activity reasons, as we said, such as in PE or extracurricular activities. That's also an exception. There's a lunch exception. There's special education needs, too, not to wear a mask or a face shield. But if you or your parent, it's really your parent that claims this exemption for you with our front office, if you have an exemption, if you're one of these students that cannot wear or has chosen not to wear a mask for important health reasons, just please do this, or please don't. <laughs> please do not actively influence or campaign other friends to claim exemptions. We know it feels better when more people are doing what we're doing, but we're asking you if you have an exemption, please don't encourage other people to go without wearing their mask. We do reserve the right to require a doctor's note and we'll likely go that route if we sense that students or teachers or parents are trying to campaign for fewer people to wear face coverings. We don't have any of that happening right now and we hope that won't happen. We think most people understand the deep important reasons to wear face coverings, to protect those whom we love. And if you have an exemption, a medical exemption, you're not wearing a face covering, please maintain physical distance just like everyone else. Um, there are people who you think might not care about wearing face coverings who are actually um, really care about it and for you to come into their space without a face covering on may make them uncomfortable. So please physically distance if you're not wearing a face covering. Physical distancing is important whether we're wearing a face covering or not, okay? Also if you've claimed an exemption Please don't be cynical about it. Don't brag about it. Don't scoff about face covering requirements. That will only reinforce people's fear that the exemption your parents claimed for you is not medical in nature. So remember, there's no religious or conscious conscience exemptions to this. Um, it's only medical exemptions or health exemptions for it. And if you're a student who's in that 10% and you feel uncomfortable because Everyone else, or most everyone else, and it's not everyone else, again, it's about 90% that will be wearing them, about 10% not. If you get questions about not wearing a face covering, please don't say, because I don't want to. Um, your parent filed an exemption based upon a legitimate health or medical need. And I'll say to the 90% of you and us who will be wearing face masks, if someone isn't, it's not really your business to ask about why they're not, okay? They have important reasons. Let's just move forward with each other in kindness and respect and patience and love, knowing that we all have important reasons to wear face coverings and for some not to wear them, okay? All right, few other safety tips. Please wash your hands frequently. This is better than hand sanitizer. Use soap, 20 seconds. Hum happy birthday in your head twice. That's the 20 second um, guide, guide rule, right? Use sanitizer frequently if you, if you don't have a chance to get into a bathroom and wash your hands. And this stewardship minute that we've done here at our school that's part of our tradition, we're gonna do that every hour on the hour as we have every year previously, but we're gonna do it more diligently because the stakes are a little higher now. Uh, typically, if we have three COVID-19 cases in a class, we'll need to quarantine the class. And if we have 15 cases in the school, we're going to need to quarantine as a whole school. So if we can keep our COVID-19 transmission rates down, if we can manage them well, we can keep attending in person, all right? Okay, well, it's time for us to move forward with our year. We are connecting with each other in hope. Let's close by watching President Nelson. You know, safety isn't 
I should say physical safety isn't the only kind of safety that we care about here. In fact, in many ways, it's moral safety that we care about the most. And so I want you to listen to President Nelson as he talks about for the strength of youth standards and how that keeps us morally safe, how that keeps us spiritually clean. Uh, let's listen to him and then we will uh, wrap up with one final thing. Set a standard for the rest of the world. Embrace being different. The booklet entitled For the Strength of Youth should be your standard. It is the standard that the Lord expects all his youth to uphold. Now as his humble servant, I plead with you to study this booklet again. Prayerfully read it like you've never read it before. Mark it up, talk about it, discuss the standards with your friends, decide how you can live these standards, your standards, with even more exactness. Okay. Well, we just want to conclude by saying how much we love you. We trust you. You have come to this school making deep commitments about behavior, about your standard of conduct, about uniforms, about unity, right? We love you. Go Patriots, connect in hope, and we'll see you around the campus. Thanks, everyone.